Isang magandang gabi sa ating mga kabayan dito sa Middle East and the rest of Asia, pati na rin dyan sa Europa. Very good morning naman sa ating mga kawem sa kabilang palig ng mundo, the United States of America. Muli nating balikan ang ilang mga bumitang balita sa mundo ng Web3 nitong nakarang linggo. Mga balitang sinubay, Ben, at sinundan ninyo para malaman ang mga kaganapan sa Web3 at crypto world. Simulan natin ng Baltan with the news na nagbabala ang Philippine Stock Exchange na bagong crypto scheme na gumagamit ng kanilang pangalan at logo. Pag-alaman na this scam targets investors by impersonating the PSP leading them to believe they are engaging in legitimate transactions. May fake website pala nakamit sa scam na to. Nako partner, may mga online ads pa nga na ginagamit ng creators ng scheme na ito at kung saan kapag ka naging interesado ang isang investor ay ini-encourage ang mga ito na mag-withdraw ng funds pagkatapos ay sasabihin nila they made an error and must create a new account with additional deposits. Na ko yan, mag-iingat-ingat tayo mga kabayan, no? This is another, you know, classic scheme, but now yeah. we are dealing with the PSE right here. This is the Philippine Stock Exchange, and they are actually using the blockchain and DeFi space yep. to get money from the Filipino citizens. So as always, guys, just do your own research. Any investment scheme that is too good to be true, as always, is a scam, yeah. At saka, de- depende rin yan, eh. Tsaka yung i-invest yun na pera, wag siguro dapat yung... Yung kaya nyo lang mawala. Yung dapat ang kaya nyo... Eh, yun lang dapat ang i-invest nyo. Samantala, nahack naman ng mga hackers ng ex-account ng Department of Finance ng Pinas. Nakakita dito ng ilang mga users ng post na nagsasabing may reliable way to multiply crypto. Yeah, hindi kagaya ng mga typical scams. Mm-hmm. The Department of Finance account was observed replying to other users embedding these fraudulent messages within the reply section ng nasabing account. So kapag nag-reply ka sa message na ito, eh, saka mo palang malalamang ma-access na ang scheme. This is not the first time that the government account was hacked to promote fraudulent crypto schemes. The most famous instance of this was when the Department of Health Twitter account got compromised to promote a fake Uniswap airdrop. Yeah, you have to remember, this was just literally last year. Mm-hmm. And now the Department of Finance is under siege <laughs> by the scammers, man. So, you know, like, even at this point, kailangan natin pag-usapang kung isang actual government account kaya nang i-hack for fraudulent mm-hmm. schemes. Like, how safe are the people these days. Yeah, ano pa kaya tayo na yeah. hindi ganun ka tindi oh, security. Literally normal citizens lang, no? That's why er- everybody, we always gotta remember, keep your account safe, do your own research, and always be vigilant. You have to be wary of all these scams happening around us today, all right? Because if you could make so much money in the blockchain, for sure, scams yep. are gonna be hopping on there. Lahat naman ngayon, gusto ng pera eh. So, dalawa lang yan. Isang nagpapaloko at saka isang nang loloko. Yeah. Pili ka na lang sino ka doon. Isa pa sa naging top stories this week ang nabalitang paglilipat ng 10,000 bitcoins ng United States government to a wallet address ending with the letters NOE kamakailan lang. Ayon niya sa mga analyst ang nasabing funds ay nanggagaling sa ginagawang Silk Road grade at may current value na 593.91 million dollars. This marks the latest high profile transfer of the United States government's bitcoin holdings. Like almost more than half yep. of a billion dollars worth yes, of crypto. Right? So it is worthy to note that the United States government is currently the largest geopolitical holder of Bitcoin with over 203,000 Bitcoin under the control of the U.S. So if that is not ind- any indication for you guys that we are slowly moving into the digital currency world. <laughs> exactly. That's the reply right there. Samantala, patuloy naman ang pag-hodl ng mga Bitcoin holders ng kanilang coins as its value hovers over the $60,000 mark. Nakita ito despite the various factors na nagpababa ng value nito this month. Naging cautious nga ang mga investors at naging vigilant in observing the market para i-guide sila with their investments. Matatandaan nga na nabalita namin last week ang pagbagsak ng halaga ng Bitcoin dahil na rin sa pagbalita ng Japan na tapusin ang kanilang zero interest rate regime. And there were like so many various factors affecting mm-hmm. the price of Bitcoin since not just last week, actually since the past month. So over the last three months, more than 374,000 Bitcoin have transitioned into long-term holding status. So despite recent heavy selling last week, on the average, Bitcoin's price is still above what most active investors paid for their coins. And we have to take note, Bitcoin's price is like times two, almost close to times three since it's price from last year. Yep. Everyone's just hodling. There's no reason for anyone to panic. Like, that's just what it is. At least, hindi na, hindi naman na burn yung coin, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it will never happen. Yeah, we had, we had the recent halving, so. Yeah. And wrapping up our top stories this week, ang revelation na over half of 50% ng mga crypto ads on Facebook na nakikita natin ay mga scams or are violating Meta's advertising policies. Yeah, ito ay according sa research na ginawa ng Australian Competition and Consumer Association or ACCC bilang bahagi ng legal battle nito with Meta. Mm-hmm. Itong 2024 lang, 
Australians have reported 3,456 cases of investment wow. scams with losses exceeding $78 million. Sinabi ba ng ACC, sina during its investigation, they identified around 600 ads na potentially violating Meta's policy. Nakikita ko to lagi. Ewan ko kung scam tong isang to. Sorry, Black Duck ha, pero naririnig kita lagi. Laging merong interviews sa Staten Island. What do you want to invest in this year? I'm investing on Black Duck. Pero pag tinitignan ko yung project, wala naman. So, mag-ingat tayo, guys. We do a quick roundup of this week's Web3 Chronicles episodes. Like, almost more than half of our news just relates to crypto scams. Like, mm -hmm. this is not new, guys. Do your own research, as always. But it's already becoming so clear that everyone's trying to make money. Yeah, kasi it burned. Worst way. Yeah, so you gotta watch out for yourselves, uh, everyone. Tendency natin kasi yan, whenever we're burning our money and our investments, nagahanap tayo ng way para mabawi natin yung perang yan. So, huwag tayo maging greedy. Ang game na to is patience lang. At yan ang mga mainit na balita at bumid ng happening sa Web3 this week. Ako po si Adrian. Ako naman po si Sheprod. May kita-kita tayo muli. So, give you what's hot and what's trending. Dito lang sa inyong patuloy na pagkakatiwalaan pagdating sa Web3 news and happenings. Web3 Chronicles! I miss some AI news right now. We I actually, wanted to hear some I, AI news for you, my friend. That's why it's a wonderful episode this week because we don't gotta hear about none of the AI, yeah. man. Everything's about the citizen. <laughs> we gotta keep ourselves safe. That's what you should be all about every yeah. single time. I give you this one.